Hey, 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 you know what? Hey, that, hey, that's, hey, that, that reminds me. We don't yep. have we have a bye, but we don't we don't really have a hi. 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 Right. Well, why don't we do a hi? Should we start doing we that? Do hi. Hello. hello. We need an opening. Hello. Maybe we should start doing that. All right. Because we'll I'm like, hello. Have you seen the prices? <laughs> you know what I, mean? I can hear the listeners. Welcome to Smartless. Smart. Most meek laugh you can do, Will. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay, Sean, meek laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't, I can't just blow your nose. We're recording. I oh, just that, talk about, wait, I didn't say do the most meek nose blowing you can do. <laughs> that was. <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah, I, I sneezed right before I came. But out. how about every time? Every time you have like a slight cough or sneeze. How about every time you sneeze in public? Now anybody who anybody freaks out, everybody they look out. at you like, "What's your problem? Why are you even out of the house?" I'm like, "Well, oh, it's you look, just they, people. They look at you like you're a war I criminal. Know. You're like, what? The but I guess fuck? I'm guilty of that too. I know. If somebody coughs more than once, right? If they cough twice, I'm like, I, I give them. I try to get eye contact with them. Like, are you okay? Is, mm -hmm. it, is this something I need to worry about? Or mm -hmm. I still get surprised at the people who cough and don't, especially after everything we've been through, who still just cover your mouth. That's all I ask. Yeah, yeah, or just into the shirt. I used to think into the shirt was super gross, but mm. you know what? It's, it's, a, it's a nice gesture. It'll leave a spot, but it's better than getting someone sick. Well, it depends on the shirt, right? And the blood content in your cough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean yeah, a spot? They... Um, I had a friend over last night that he was, was he, bleeding. he was like congested and I'm like, what, why did you oh. come over? He's like, I'm yeah. not sick. I'm not sick. Yeah. And look, you woke up blowing your nose. I so up, yeah. well, I, I just had a was sneeze. It, was it at sneeze. least worth it, Sean? You old war horse. What was this Scotty name? was out. <laughs> stupid. So what dumb. <laughs> we missed you all weekend. Uh, Sean. I know. Did you go Sunday? Yeah, we went, Sunday. we went, we went, we went. I didn't go Sunday cause granddad pulled his back. He pulled so, his back. You know. Everybody was calling into question whether everybody kept going. Yeah, Jason pulled his back. Like, eh, yeah, no, it's it's that. not it's not great. I was uh, <laughs> I'm uh, in ashamed to say it is a golf injury. Um, I was simply yeah. leaning over to address the ball about to swing, not even swinging, and it no. just slid out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, that's painful. Jeez. But then Dion Phaneuf, our 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 incredible friend, love uh, golfer, um, yeah. uh, uh, NHL star, yeah. uh, gave me some of his um, CBD cream. I uh, use that. Let's plug it right yeah. now. It's uh, Canny, it right? Canny, Canny Ease or Canny something? Well, get uh, it right because you're now you're plugging Dion's. Canny 1200. I think it's called Canny Golf. Can I? Can I? Twelve hundred. C A N I. Can he not? Can he not pull his back out over fifty? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm going to get the right word there, the right title, and we're going to. Do gonna you plug think it that you're? I mean, do you think the fact that you were just addressing the ball? Obviously, you're brittle and you have no nutrients in your body. Do you think that that is <laughs> of concern to you? Do you? Are you worried about snapping some of your limbs at any point? Because I mean, you have, you have. There's literally nothing holding you together anymore. Right. Just it's tape. not true. I wish I was as thin as you think I am. We saw or, a guy. Or as, as thin as I should be for the lack of food, I mean. Sean, do you remember this? About a year ago, we were playing with uh, Chuck Day and Mac Laney and those guys up up there in the valley, and we sit, there's a guy on this other on this other hole. I don't know, maybe 92, 93, and he was just God bless him. He's making his way around this guy, this old 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 timer, and he shuffled up to the ball and he was leaning over, and I just look over and I point, and Jason just goes. That's not me, motherfucker. <laughs> I go, yeah, it is. <laughs> that's you. I would have that's thought it was you. That's you second. now. That's Jason, you, you are so thin. What are you talking I, about? What you, I am so not. What are you talking about? You're what are you talking about? Thin. I 70 you. pounds. You're very thin. Yeah. No, I just I've, don't have any muscle mass because I'm not out there. I'm not okay. like blasting backs and buys on Tuesdays and Thursdays, <laughs> pushing weight. You fucking well, you, jarhead. Why don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, lifting weight. Yeah, yeah. Moving weight has there's there's no science that says it's good for you as you get older. Oh, hang on a second. Look it up. Yeah, you're right. By the way, here's <laughs> an should. update on the sweaters. I was uh, talked to Alex, 
And Wait, uh, whoa, 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 we're moving on to sweaters. sweaters. Well, remember, remember, we talked about my mom knitting sweaters for you guys. And, oh yeah. And uh, so I yeah. guess how does she that heard, got to do with pushing weight? We're just talking about getting older because here you'll hear why. Oh, okay. And she says, "Okay, well, listen, I'm gonna." Need, she texts me out of the blue, as she does, just apropos of nothing. I'm gonna need sizes and blah blah blah, and I'm gonna guess that Sean is a little slighter, is a little slimmer than Jason. <laughs> Oh God, no! <laughs> no, she just mixed up the names. That's all. Yeah. That's all. That's, no, that's no, all. And it's just that, like Sean looks slimmer, mm -hmm. and and you're right. I mean, you are, and I will I will go on record saying you're very skinny and stuff, but you just you're never gonna lose that look. You have the look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You're so right. I, that's the problem. I wasn't born with a beautifully angled face like you, with great bone structure and you a strong have, superhero gin, chin. I am. I am doughy. I am round. I am. I am. I'm. I came out puffy. Okay. No, you didn't. <laughs> you didn't. You. You both have chiseled, good-looking faces. Oh, you damn on-camera job. By the way. You want to talk about a chiseled, uh, good-looking face? Here we go. Uh -oh, with the segue. Nice this segue. is the segue of all segue. That's amazing. Let me tell you something, guest. You better not look puffy after that yeah. intro. Uh, he, Check your lighting right now. Don't worry. He won't. I've never seen him look puffy, and I've never seen him look bad. It's impossible for him. And he is just and, and he's maintained it for so long which oh, is really cool. admirable on top yeah. of which the really most admirable thing about him is that how well he's maintained a career that has spanned decades what? for decades this guy has been at the top of the list it is unbelievable we know Nicholson. we knew when we no, were, we're kids. talking about angular face again Sean, again on, we know him so i can't i, I gotta be really clear, careful because i just want to get a little bit robert out before pattinson. you guys start before you start guessing you don't know robert pattinson and he doesn't want to know you angular face i know but he has no interest in seeing you but this guy robert oh, even, even robert pattinson looks up to this guy Willem Dafoe. this guy Pattinson. has done everything He's done every, uh, the top of the game in film and television. He's done some of the most iconic films, some of the most iconic television. Uh, he's been nominated for two Emmys, six Golden Globes, four SAG Awards, uh, which he's won two. He's starred in so many 80s classics. He was part of what was then known as Here we go. The Brat Pack. <gasps> He's been in St. Elmo's Fires, About Last Night, The this Outsiders, Robert Lowe. This West Robert Wing, Lowe. Parks and Recreation. It's our friend, uh, Robert. Mr. Robert, Robert Lowe. 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 Now that is a beautiful <laughs> man. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why Are you on set right now? He's in a cop Listener, uniform. Listener, he's got a cop uniform on. Yeah, it's, it's a fireman's uniform, yes. It's a fireman's uniform. Oh, fireman, sorry. I told, I told the whole crew. Yeah. I, I said, I got to go see my boys. I got to go see... <sighs> yeah. See, see my guy. This is so lovely. He's, he's on the he's on the set of uh, of nine one one Lone Star, which is the show that he stars in, and he produces. In your fourth season, you're shooting your fifth season, maybe. We are uh, almost done with season four. Almost yes. done with season, season four. four. Unbelievable. I see yeah. clips of that show, and I'm tired looking at. It. Like I guess oh, it no. looks like Try fifteen a hour full days. episode. You rude bastard. What? Try watching a full episode, it's, not the clips. Yeah, wait, watch the episodes. Don't watch Sean. the clips. The clips. No, no, don't like help. the promos. I mean the promos. And I look yeah. and I see your face and I'm like, God, Rob just finished a 15 hour day on that mm -hmm. episode. Like it just looks so like. Do you sleep in olive oil, Rob? Is there a <laughs> is there a, a, a mattress that's got a zip in olive oil pouch that you sleep in? I know, look at the best skin in the world. Um um I I'm an Olympic sleeper. You I think mm -hmm. it, we've talked about I I get a lot of sleep. My I'm in I have shame around how much I sleep. I because it makes me seem like so you still sleep like you're a teenager. Yes. How many hours I do. is that? I, what what time what time are you in the rack every night, Rob? Well, today I had to I had to be in the car at five fifteen in the morning. Oh, God. Yeah. Now, but but as you know, I live in Santa Barbara, so and I get I'm lucky enough to be driven, so I can sleep in the car. So I get an mm -hmm. extra hour and a half in the car. But I'm I, I'm. I was in bed at nine thirty last mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're and then you're up at. So what time are you getting up for a five fifteen? Get in the car. Five fourteen. Truly. Five fourteen. Because I don't really want to. Well, now you're gonna get you're gonna get my typical morning questions now, and I'm gonna try to keep this clean. Oh, boy, but here he goes. Yeah. well, but hang on now. Why are you leaving <laughs> the go. house without a shower or without <laughs> emptying yourself? You're doing that in your trailer. <laughs> All of that? Um, I don't. I don't do the morning shower. I do the. I do the nighttime shower. Nice. Um, yeah, huh. I get that. 
I do the nighttime so shower. So then, what do you do about your bed head? Then you you let the people in the way, in the makeup tra- hair trailer do that, all that. That's that's what the professionals are for. Isn't but you it could nice save to take your, a sh- hold it, Sean. You could save yourself. You <laughs> wow. could save. You could save yourself an hour if you don't do makeup and you do your own hair before you leave the house. How does it save me an hour? That costs me an hour. That makes it. That means I have to wake oh. up earlier. Yeah, that's true. God, that's great math. God, isn't it Sorry. nice to take a shower at night? Yeah, it makes you feel like a kid. I take sometimes take a shower, put my pajamas on, watch TV, and then you go straight to bed. You brush your teeth, and go to bed. Oh uh, yeah. Now I I look forward to going to sleep. I'm like, mm, 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 I mm, do mm, love mm, that. Mm, yeah. Now, Rob, you know you're a, an incredibly talented actor. You can't get this far without being a really good actor. Did it ever bother you that like? It seems like the only people that get real good accolades as an actor are those that look like character actors. You don't. You look like a leading man. Was it ever frustrating to you that you didn't get the character roles because you were born with leading man looks? Well, I, well first of all, thank you for, for saying that. And I do feel like I'm a, a character actor trapped in a leading man's body. Mm-hmm. Well, look at for Austin sure. Powers. You were hysterical in Austin Powers. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. you can, it's a long list. And when I when I get to... You know, I, I'm, I, I, you know, Johnny Depp's made a career of not, you know, he's so handsome, but he always wears prosthetics and stuff. And so he gets to do these insane characters. And I, 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 every time I've been able to do that, I, I've found it very freeing. Um, but yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. Cause your trajectory is been, uh, it's so hard. I mean, everybody's got their own sort of path that they have, but yours is gone through so many different areas. And and I was a lot of people have peaks and valleys. You haven't even had any valleys. It's been sort of like from peak to peak, and you've just kind of jumped. You started in, and I mentioned sort of the Brat Pack, but you started in was was The Outsiders your first big film? Was my first movie. Period. I mean, I okay. So yeah, talk wow. about that. Talk about That's that process. Crazy. How you got it, and and how it came about, and what it was like. I mean, Jesus. I wish you guys had been, you know, in in that mix. You would have. It was it was an incredible thing, and all of us who went through it are like bonded, we're like band of brothers, because uh, <laughs> Coppola put us through such an arduous, insane, and I think actually illegal, Screen mm-hmm. Actors Guild wise type of boot camp um really went on for months months and months and months mixing and matching and you'd go into the sound stage and there'd be like mickey rourke with roller skates on stinking like an animal and (laughs) and and being treated like he was the the marlon brando reincarnated and then you'd have scott Bayo coming in in a limousine and telling francis he had to get back to his show and francis going what show (laughs) <laughs> and he goes, happy days. And Francis going, what's that? Uh-huh. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then you'd have, like, Ricky Schroeder and, uh, y- y- you know, D- Dennis Quaid. And, I mean, wow. just it, it, anybody and everybody. So he was doing, like, mixing and matching? Or were these, like, kind of forced bonding kind of uh, chemistry reads? The the forced bonding came later. The, but these were mix and matches with everybody present. Got so it. you showed up, everybody showed up at eight o'clock in the morning and you left at, you know, seven o'clock at night and you just sat on the floor and he would go, okay, I want to see Dennis Quaid with, uh, uh, Henry Thomas and, uh, wow. Ricky Schroeder and, uh, you know, whatever. Wow. That's wild. Wow. What was the name of your character again? It wasn't. Uh, Soda Pop. Soda Pop. Soda Pop. Soda Pop. Yes. Soda Pop. You know, what's really cool mm-hmm. about The Outsiders is. Is every you know it's it's part of the seventh grade curriculum, yeah, of almost every school in the country. So every year there's a new group of seventh graders who get introduced to uh, to not only to the outsiders but the you know like soda pop Curtis, yay! So that's super cool. <laughs> uh, and look at you now from soda pop to cop. I literally just yeah. had a guy a send me a text Sorry. this morning, and he said, uh, uh, "Stay gold, pony boy." He literally Aww. said that on a text this morning who, from Harry who? Chung, Will. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I like Harry. I was about to lay into whoever did it, but I like Harry a lot. He's a friend. Harry's a good man. He's a good <laughs> man. Uh, so, Wait, so I remember when you were in contact. I, I remember when you were in contact, and it was like, that's one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, I love and, it. And I was like, and you showed up on screen. I was like, wait, that's, that's Rob Lowe. I was like, I don't know, 22 years old when it came out or something. 
And I was like, wait, Rob Lowe is in this movie. That's so crazy and amazing. Like you, you like to Will's point, you would take no peak, no, um, just all peaks, right? No valleys. And you would appear, even if it was the smallest role or a leading role or whatever, they were always seems at the, at least the perception was that they were all super high quality movies and TV shows. Totally. And by the way, sometimes with Sean Rob, as you as you know, sometimes it's like having like a kid come in because he just goes. I remember when you were in contact, and you're like, okay, man, don't, are, are, we're not just fucking doing free form, just whatever pops into our fucking head. Jesus Christ. Uh, I remember one time I saw you on a fucking what, man? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, remember, I saw you on a billboard once. Nominated, nominated for his nominated. question. Of, of the three of us, skills. he was nominated for the uh, host of the Singled year. out. But, but Rob, but Rob, you Singled go, you out. Do, singled out. Pulled singled out of the, the trifecta. Um, no, is this true? This is amazing. <laughs> no, it's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. 100% true. Yeah. The <laughs> best, oh, God, best host <laughs> of a podcast. Well, there's three of us, you know. No, yeah. just Sean. Sean. That is the greatest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. 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 He didn't win. Okay. Uh, That's why? the greatest thing I've ever heard. Why? <laughs> Missed it. Because they finally went and listened to it. And yeah. then they were like, oh shit. <laughs> Not him. Uh you know, because oh, yeah, you know, but 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 Rob, so you do like the outsiders, and it is true what Sean says, and what we were saying, which is like you do all these things that are amazing that, that have that each one of them have a place in, you know, culturally a place in our, everybody's lives, whether whether it's it's um, the outsiders and then St. Elmo's Fire. Uh, about Which I just last. saw. I just watched it for the first Again. time ever. Like, are you serious? Like, oh, swear to God, never saw it. I watched it like no, a month ago. No, he's saying, are you ago. serious that you're just interrupting and going blur? Sorry. <laughs> so. So you do the Outsiders. What was what was film number two after the Outsiders, which was a big sensation, and every we all saw it. What was the next thing? What was the move when that came out? Was it like you had everything offered to you? All of us, all of us got a lot of a lot of offers. I mean, I think um, Tom did the best with it because he followed it up with Risky Business, and and uh, that was you know the mm -hmm. beginning. For him, I did a movie called Class with Andrew McCarthy and Jacqueline oh, sure. Bissett. Yes, you oh, did. I, oh, um, I, I know it well. Good for you, Rob. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. great film. Good for a, you. Okay. Class act. I was, right? I know what was going on yeah. there. Okay, go ahead. You know, no, no. Yeah, I'm no. no. You, you don't have to admit on, to anything to... on this podcast. You just keep going with your answer. I thought. But I have something I want to say about contact after oh, Will gets there. Go ahead. Holy fuck. <laughs> uh, Sean, I, love, Sean, I love that he's obsessed with contact. I had two lines in it, but it's know, good. I love movie. it. I'm obsessed with you in it too. Mm -hmm. Clearly, obsessed. Will I used it? Obsessed, and it's his favorite movie of all time. Go figure. Hey, listen, Rob. So <laughs> you do. Oh, God Next to it. Star Trek. Sometimes it's like you just gotta <laughs> breathe. They're right. You just do have to finish breathe. your juice box, Sean. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Rob. So you do. You do class with uh, with Andy McCarthy, Jacqueline Bissett. Yep. Uh, yep. Jacqueline Bissett, and then. What was after? Then was it's um, Sean's favorite act actor, Jodie Foster. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I say something in about Hotel that New movie Hampshire? Now? Oh. In Hotel oh. New Hampshire was going to be, that was the one everybody, all the young actors wanted to do because they thought it was going to be Oscar type movie. Because in those days, um, however you want to call the Bratback movies, teen movies, John Hughes movies, whatever you want to call them, they they were like the guilty pleasure of the movie business. Mm -hmm. Like today, they'd be f straight movies. There'd be yep. no guilt associated with them at right. all. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. they'd be the tent pole. But in those days, it was like, Terms of Endearment's the real movie this year, okay? Right. And, mm -hmm. oh, you're doing that, 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 that trifle over here? Like, that's the way it was. That's what it was. it was. It was very segregated in that way. But Hotel New Hampshire felt like a real movie. Um, of course, then it came out the same weekend as Splash, and that was the end oh, of it. Oh, wow. Wasn't that wow. a John Irving um, It's a John book? Irving yeah. Uh, book, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and it did, I remember when that came out, what was that, like? Here he goes. 85? 84, 83? 84. 83, yeah. late 83, yeah. I think. So, so... I know I, I messed up on that one. I'm usually no, I'm really good movie. Really spot even on. Just inside the same decade was um, just yeah. incredible. That, but but so you do, but you did. I know that you're sort of you're saying that these are the films that were the tribe, but these were the films that people were going to see, that all of us were going to see. You know, I mean, I, I wasn't. Uh, 
I wasn't a huge student of the cinema mm. yet. Mm. Uh, mm. And, and those are the movies I wanted to go see. I wanted to go see you guys in those. I wanted to go see Youngblood, by the way, as a Canadian. Hey, uh, mm. Dude, mm. Rob, let's talk about Youngblood for a Young second. Blood. Sean, I mean, quick five for us. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Rob, talk about it. Yeah, go ahead. Youngblood is, it's, I think it might be the, the second best hockey movie at first is slap shot let's right. face it slap shot's right. one of the greatest movies ever made mighty period. ducks mighty ducks mighty yeah. ducks no I'm, I'm throwing down i'm sorry i'm oh, not yeah. having it no, I'm, I'm just not having it no, uh, I'm, I'm, with rob. I'm with rob uh now yeah young blood is fun because whenever i get to go to a, a hockey game people are super excited because there aren't that many hockey movies there aren't that many if you're a hockey fan there aren't all that many really no, dude, and we we loved as a Canadian, we loved Youngblood, and 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 I would say this, Slapshot maybe because it came before and Paul Newman, et cetera, but they're kind mm. of different. They fall into different categories within hockey. So it's in terms of like a pure hockey movie that's not a comedy. That's right. Youngblood is the best in that re regard. So they're very yeah. different. But anyway, yeah, pure we, hockey. Pretty if you're a young hockey player, I mean, they all every, everybody who's played hockey has has worn that movie out because because it's about coming up into the league so now sure. were you were you a good skater were you had were you playing hockey at that time no i was horrible i i, I mean i i could rockefeller center date hold hands skate right and so i had uh, it was the first time i ever had a trainer or i had to work out and we and i swayze was my co-star patrick swayze and we we trained Every day for I was almost eight weeks, six hours a day, brutal, Gosh. brutal, brutal training, and I got to be pretty good on skates at that point. Wow! And Keanu and Keanu wow. uh, was in it too. No way! Uh, as, the, as the goalie. goalie, he was the goalie. I Who? thought he was an actual French Canadian goalie. He was right. We we had him on the on the podcast. We, we just had him on the podcast. He, he, he was a goalie. He was a goalie. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Someone listens. Do you remember interacting with Keanu back then and thinking like, oh, this kid's going to do something? <laughs> like, do you, do you have anything like that? Will, I'm telling you, and this is no slight to Keanu Reeves, who I adore, I thought he was a French-Canadian goalie. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I, I thought, I, I mean, which, which probably tells you all you need to know, because I thought he was the real thing. That's how good he is. Well, on the same, same sort of question on uh, on Outsiders, um, d could it was it clear to you, uh, or, or if you had to bet on one of those horses to to have the kind of longevity that you ended up having in your career, who did you think was going to be Pony Boy with you? would be the horse I'd bet on. Pony Boy's the horse I'd bet on. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it, again, and it's funny, because you Tom has obviously become you know, a legendary, legendary actor. And I'm not sure you would have um, back in the day, but he had, he had such drive, mm. such a, he had an intensity that none of us have. And then Taps, I think, put him over the top, right? Or was, or Taps, think it was Taps was right before. Taps, Taps was, was before. Um, yeah, come oh, on. okay. Taps that made him, Sorry, yeah. And, wow. and he was Sorry. so good in that movie. I got it. Taps was my first Hollywood, big Hollywood premiere. That Taps. was, that, I remember that movie really knocking me out. Yeah. Oh, Wait, can we go, movie. like, go back we'll to the go back to contact, second, like... sure. And, and so on, on contact. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, was I want, <laughs> no, I want, but like. Did it say, were you scared? <laughs> <laughs> Did you think the aliens were really coming up? <laughs> He's all hopped up on apple juice now. Go, let him go. <laughs> Do it. Go no. On, <laughs> Well, no. Well, since you brought it up, the content. But I want to know. I want to go back. Yep. Before the outsiders. But I just want to get this out about contact. My favorite line in the movie. Is <laughs> <laughs> you are the worst. Go ahead. God. Only person I know to get drunk on apple juice. Just My swerving baby. all I over the podcast. Dying. I am dying. I can't pull over and take a nap. I can't believe you're torturing Rob like this. I, can't. I wanted to get out my favorite line in contact, mm -hmm. which was Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Wait, McConaughey was in it? Yeah, Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey. And I think it's like the second time they kiss in the uh -huh. movie. And no. Jodie pulls away and she's, and her first line, I'm not making this up, is, I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your favorite. There <laughs> uh, goes your nomination okay. for this year. So no, Jody Foster's a friend, and she would laugh at that. So <laughs> fuck me. I oh, want to go back. You are literally crying. Will is literally crying <laughs> so tears of laughter. 
I hey, Rob, fucking... you've got your own podcast. You could say, you see, it's not easy, right? It's not no. easy at all. You got to deal with <sighs> fucking. Anyway, fucking this is why I do me. mine alone. Exactly. You have to oh, deal yeah. with the nonsense. Thank you. No, I, I wanna... love you. you know I love that. you too so much. Um, so, Robbie, before the outsiders, we kind of just skipped over. Like, I don't know anything about your like past or your child. Like, how did you get that? Like, wasn't that such a huge deal? To what were you doing before that? Like theater or anything? I I was doing theater when I lived in Ohio. It was my family lived there? I was eight years old, and I I went and saw a local school production and fell in love with the kid. Like. You know, like I was like, I want to do that. And my parents were like, right. yeah, sure, whatever. And so then, you you had a love for it when it, when you were super young. Super young. It's all I ever wanted. Knew exactly what I wanted to do. Wow, isn't that wild? Wow. But you couldn't you couldn't pursue it in Ohio, right? Was it was there a move out to Los Angeles that that triggered like, okay, I wanna I actually wanna do this now? Well, my thing was I'm gonna do I did every sort of university. There were there was a a, a traveling um oh god, this thing called the Kenley Players. You gotta look this up, guys. It's the best. We should make a movie about this. The Kenley uh, Players. It, it would be summer, professional summer. It's like got waiting for Guffman, but real. John Kenley was a musical theater producer, lived as a woman in Florida. Uh, during part of the year, and then was John Kenley in the Midwest, and of course the Midwestern people were never the wiser. And he he would get whoever's the hottest TV star and put them in Camelot or something like that, and then they would tour Dayton, Cincinnati, Akron, Columbus, Flint, Michigan, and you'd you like Henry Winkler would come and just crush for <laughs> four weeks in the summer, and you'd you'd mm -hmm. see like Vic Tabak in Man of La Mancha, <laughs> yeah, 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 or and it was it was the most delicious. Sandy Duncan is Peter Pan. Of course, and, yes, I saw it. <laughs> Jason's old co-star. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Wait, so so Rob, but that that's a good point. So you do so you're doing this thing, this 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 touring theater thing, which was, does sound amazing. And and then what? How? What do I tell you? My Paul Lind stories. Well, oh God, fucking, let's go. <laughs> Yeah. Look at you, you little giblet. <laughs> um, that actually sounded more like Charles Nelson Riley. No, the mi I, a mix of the two. <laughs> this is definitely a mix of the One two. One of my favorite Paul Lynn lines on Hollywood Square, Squares was um, they the host said, uh, okay, for the center square for the X, uh, Paul, uh, w when a man uh, falls over a boat, you yell man overboard. What do you yell when a woman falls over a boat? And he goes, false spade ahead. <laughs> 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 uh, wait, wait, how did you, where where did you encounter Paul Lynn, first of all, Rob? Oh, <laughs> the Kenley Players. <laughs> Not really? on Hollywood Squares. Did you ever do Hollywood Squares? No, I did the $10,000, this is how long it was, how long ago it was, the $10,000 pyramid. Oh, wow. Before it was 25 or 100. Yes, yep. with Dick Clark. And that was a that was my first trip to, to New York, the publicity trip. And I played against Tony Danza, and I eviscerated him. <laughs> I once took Tony Danza deep at the Hollywood Stars Night. Uh, wow. at, at Dodger no Stadium. way. Yeah. He threw a little cookie over the plate, and I took it out to right center field. I love that. Yep. Past the sprinting Lou Ferrigno. Uh-huh. Inside the park home run. Then they, what, you went around the bases on a gurney or what? You probably pulled something for <laughs> no, sure. At that, <laughs> at that time, I was, uh, I was, I was pretty, pretty limber. You really were not. I love good. those old... <laughs> The old time Dodger Hollywood stars, I, the first one I played in, it was such a huge thrill. It was 1979. And I stepped up to the plate and I went, now batting, Rob Lode. No. <laughs> no way. No way. Oh. <laughs> and <laughs> it was amazing. And I think I might have got a, a fielder's choice to first base or whatever. Yeah. And and I was like super, because in those days it was super competitive actually. Yeah. And then it, it, at a certain point it devolved into hijinks and then you'd get Kareem Abdul-Jabbar pitching to Billy Barty. Right, mm -hmm. with a huge, with, with a large bat. With a bat. huge bat. That's yeah. right, yes. Yeah. And that's yeah. what happened and then it all, but it was, that was my moment at the Hollywood I talk stars. to Kimmel about this sometimes like we, we should approach them and 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 ask them if they if, if they would be interested in in us just sort of just like let's make this thing overhand again you know fast pitch baseball because like now I think it's like softball they bring in a fence and 
We should get it back to. Uh, Listen, I'm going to make that. If J- you're down, Jason's, I'm... Like, Jason's like, how can we suck the fun back out of it? You know what I mean? <laughs> Do you ever yeah, hear, no more... Rob, do you ever hear about the golf trip we went on last year and Jason, on our way there, we were like eight of us and Jason's like, okay, here's the deal. Everybody has to putt everything out. We're going to keep score. It's going to be, and everybody Aggregate went like, Aggregate score hey. over four days. <laughs> and everybody's like, hey, man, oh my fucking God. relax. <laughs> we haven't even started the, the, the trip yet. And he's already one to takes the yeah. fun out. Oh. Um, wait, so Rob, okay, we're jumping all over the place. But what I do want to know is, when was the move, because you did all these really successful, great movies, like I pointed out before, Samuel's Fire, About Last Night, whatever it was, Class, one of my favorite, Masquerade, which I loved mm. as well. Thank you, I like uh, that one. I thought that was a very underappreciated movie. Um, and then all of a sudden, you start, you made like this switch and you're like, well, I'm going to do comedies. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, you became a guy who was like in every comedy in the 90s, uh, you were in them, and it was a big, was that like a, did you make a conscious decision like, yeah, fuck it, I'm done with this, I'm now going to do that? How did that happen? Well, I'd loved, always loved comedy, and it was my first love, and was obsessed with SNL. I did, for my sixth grade talent show, I did Aykroyd's Bassomatic sketch. I wow. loved, <laughs> loved <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't know that one. Basomatic. Um, oh, yeah. This that thing where he sells the basomatic and he talks really fast. And it's how many times has this happened to you? You have a bass. <laughs> um, <laughs> it wiggles funny. off the hook. Yeah. Uh, and so I hosted SNL yeah. and had a really good show and hit it off with Lauren. And I think Lauren saw something in me that nobody, nobody had really seen before that I could really be funny. And then, um, when they so when they made Wayne's World into a movie, yes, I had I had also connected with Mike on the show, um, and we 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 sort of just got each other. And so when they when they were making Wayne's World, they were looking for somebody who had been in a movie. I mean, they <laughs> right. Mike and Dana <laughs> literally. It was just yeah. that simple. They're like, yeah. I think Rob's been in a movie. Chantel Tracy, who he's talking about, really quickly. Uh, oh, uh, what Mike Myers and Dana Carvey? There we go. Thank yeah, you. Mike Myers. Dan <laughs> okay. Um, you have to use them sparingly, Rob. You know, yeah, you give them I the understand. easy ones like that, and then you move forward. I, got, I know I got so nervous. No, no, no Sean. So, go ahead, so Rob. you do. So, yeah, of course, of course, it's it's Wayne's World, and that makes yeah. sense <laughs> that you get brought in. Is not only had you been in a movie, you've been in a lot of big movies, and you're a movie star. So for them, it's a great get. And Lauren's like, so you're gonna, Mike's gonna write it, and you're doing it, Rob, and you start tomorrow. That's right. And you've already said yes, and here's your wardrobe, and you've said yes, and let's go into action. <laughs> <laughs> this, I just, by the way, Will, I just walked with him last oh, week. I hadn't had a, I hadn't had a good Lauren Michaels walk through Beverly Hills in a long time, and there were so many great quotes. I, I really, oh. really, really, and we have to do a coffee table book. We ha- have, all, we have to of Lauren quotes. It's they're they're the yeah. best. Yeah, one of my favorite, I, and I love Lauren. I haven't done uh, I haven't done the walk with him in in a few years now. Any of the walks I've done the beach walk, I've done obviously the Beverly Hills Flats walk many times. Wait, this is a known thing. Yeah, like, yeah that yeah. he walks with people. Yeah, yes. Like John Sykes said to me the other day, I just did a walk with Lauren, and then I saw him with Gold. I see him Goldwyn every time he's in town. Um, John Goldwyn, but I said yeah. uh, he one time said we were talking about the South, and he and he just goes. It's a Mason Dixon line thing. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> which I fucking loved. But Rob, what you did with that with that comedy turn though, what that I, I sort of felt was it was just it was, I just thought it was really admirable that you were doing this. It's it, if I remember correctly, at a time when people really were still kind of taking themselves pretty seriously, and you were not. And, and you, you were, were assigned a lane too. Yeah. And you said, Yeah, you know what? I, I'm not gonna bust out of that lane for a lane of I am a character actor and I'm doing Shakespeare now. You actually went the opposite direction. You said, mm-hmm. I'm actually going to kind of make fun of myself a little bit here mm-hmm. and um, uh, just pull my pants down a little bit, you know, and, mm-hmm. and kind of yeah. not be quite as uh, gorgeous, you know? It was it was pretty cool. Yeah, really cool. Well, thanks. I, I mean, I, I love it and I still, I still love, you know, you guys know there's nothing... Look, I'm talking to a bunch of guys who get to do you know, you know, get to play in both pools and to do, you know, like to do be doing Lone Star now and then 
the show, uh, which is now on Netflix, uh, Unstable, with my son, co- hard comedy. Oh yeah, you like, told that's me about the fun that. of it because they're so right. different. But but when I first got into when I first got into comedy, when I first got into humor, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, when I first decided, it, it was um, no one else was in that lane for sure. No yeah. one knew they yeah. weren't, and also SNL was a thing where like w- people. Like now everybody wants to do it, does it, doesn't think about it. But in those days, like, oh, you better be careful. Ooh, I don't know. Like there was all of that shit going on. It's like, right. be careful of what? Right. Yeah. But you do, you do Wayne's World, you do Tommy Boy, you do uh, um, Austin Powers. And then you jump back and you start doing things like you you do a bunch of serious dramas. You you did Brothers and Sisters. Uh, West Wing. With, well, I was going to oh, say yeah, West, West Wing. Wing right. Sorry, sorry, right. West Wing first. I was getting to West Wing, but West Wing first, which was a phenomenal show. Then, you, then Brothers and Sisters with Robbie Bates. Then, then, then you go and you make the jump, and then you start doing. I remember the day that Amy's like, "I think Rob Lowe's going to do Parks and Rec," and I was like, "What? That's amazing!" And all of a sudden, like you're on a serious drama, and then the next year you're on a sitcom, and you're on a you're on a you're on a full fledged yeah. comedy. Yeah, yes. you're, yeah. An, you're an agent's dream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very few people get that kind of I know, leeway so and can pull it off. And nobody, and there's there's no part of you that's like, well, he can't do that. You're like, yeah, he, well, yeah, it's Rob Lowe. Yeah, Rob can do it. Like, mm-hmm. that's fucking uh, rad, dude. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, kind of, so for as much as you feel like you're like a leading, you know, a character actor trapped inside a leading man's body, you did what you wanted to do anyway, which I think is super and fucking And still rad. are doing it. And yeah. they're still doing it. Yeah. It's oh, pretty rad. Thanks. I, and then now you're doing this show with Johnny. Who's a great kid? Whom I know a little yeah, bit. Yeah, your son I mean, John. Jesus yeah. Christ, that's so cool. I remember you saying, telling me. Talk that. about this, dude. It's it's so it's. I mean, to be able to work with with my son. I mean, it all started with um, him sort of trolling me on on <laughs> social media, like just brutalizing me. I mean, <laughs> mercilessly, just for nothing other than to just do it. <laughs> and it, it, people started to notice, and it got to the point that if I was out doing an, inter, an interview to promote something, whether it was, you know, the Today Show or the Ellen Show, it didn't matter what the venue was, all they really wanted to talk about was, your son just loves to make fun of you. We have some of his greatest hits here. We were, right. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So <laughs> it got to the point where I, I, we both were like, people really like this. I wonder, is there... Is there some there there? Because I mean, literally, the audience is saying, "We want this. We want yeah. more of this." So we tried to figure out what it would be, and we're like, "Well, we're not going to do a reality show," um, and I'm, and I don't want to do that thing of playing a heightened version of me because Larry David did it so well; it feels kind of done. Mm-hmm. So what is it? So we 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 we've distilled it down to really what it is is like a larger than life, benevolent narcissist dad who may or may not be as in touch with the real world as he would like to think. Mm-hmm. And and the world just applauds him. And the son, who's just like, oh, my God, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and so we we built this show called Unstable. And I play, I play a, um, you know, like an almost like an Elon Musk uh, tech genius who's unstable on his best days and maybe insane in his others. And John Owen is this the, the son who can... <laughs> Is the only one who can speak truth to power. It's it's super fun. It's called Unstable, by the way. Yes. Yes. It's on Netflix now. It's yeah. on Netflix because it's streaming. <laughs> Click it. <laughs> um, wow. Go ahead, Sean. Oh, no, I was just going to say that I, I I know Tommy Boy so well, and you're, I'm just I'm such a fan of you in it uh, as everything. But I, I just love that movie. I think that movie is so beloved by so many people. Are you guys it's like amazing? Me, by I, the I, way, when when sorry when when so when, when two people start talking at the same time and then somebody goes, no, no, you go ahead. I can't help but say, oh no, I was just going to say. Like I can't stop myself from saying it, and I tell okay. myself not to say it. But that's okay. But 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 you too. Like you just said it. It's it's impossible not to say. Oh no, I, I, I was, was just going to say. say. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like you have to say it as an acknowledgement. It's a, of, yeah. But it's like a, it's like yawning when someone else yawns next to you. You can't yeah. help it. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, uh, Tommy Boy <laughs> is a movie where, like Wayne's World, we, we thought might do do well, and Austin Powers. Had that thing, Tommy Boy. We no one ever expected that movie ever to to do 
And that started with playing tennis. I was playing tennis with Lauren. I'll never forget it. Lauren, Bernie Brillstein, myself, John Goldwyn, playing doubles. Perfect. And Lauren saying, um, you know, I think there's something with you and Farley playing brothers. Really? And I was like, wow, that'd be great. And I never heard another thing about it. And then, you know, whatever, six months later, Tommy Boy morphs into what what it is. But but I don't think anybody thought. And that's the one that I, I do think has, you know, who did I just talk to? Oh, Jonah Hill. Yeah. Jonah Hill, and I'm not kidding, will tell you that his favorite movie in the world is Tommy Boy. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, I'd be pretty close to over that Over Goodfellas, too. over the Godbies, yeah. I'm telling you, Tommy Boy. It's insane. No, it's one of the greatest comedies of, of all time. I mean, it's right up there with all of the classics. It's now, the classics. Did, did Chris make you laugh as much offset as uh, as on camera? I, he, I, he did. And, and when you were doing your meek laugh, I thought you were doing Farley. <laughs> <laughs> that, do he your meek laugh, one. Jason, because it literally yeah, is yeah, Farley. Do it. <laughs> That's, that's Farley's laugh. <laughs> he killed me. I mean, oh, Chris wow. Farley and Will Ferrell, there's just, there's no one funnier than those two guys I to know. me. For no ever, one. Ever. Yeah, I agree. I can, I completely agree. And so, so, so you do Tommy Boy, you do all this. So then you do, talk about West Wing, because West Wing was such a, I mean, that, that show just, Still, you can watch it. You can turn it on today, and it just completely holds up. It's isn't so it, good. Isn't it kind of making a resurgence? Like, I hear people talking about that. They now watch it a lot. Like, Yeah, because politics is such a big part of um, of society now, more so than then, I think, right? It's interesting about West Wing is you could, it, it kind of comes and goes. It, it was it, it, People liked it when it was on. And then in the early years of Netflix, the early years, I think it was... That and Friends were drove mm -hmm. Netflix, yep. yep, and and then it went off the platform, and now something's going on that they're into it again. I don't know what it is, but I'm hearing a lot about it again too. I don't know. So, Rob, like us, you've been doing the pod, you've been in the podcast space. I like calling it the space. Uh, <laughs> for a it few does years. sound good. It does, it's good, right? Yeah. We're in the uh -huh. podcast space. space. Um, it's better than content. You should hear me go off about, Rob, I hate when people go, I'm a content creator. So you just make fucking shit? Or storyteller. <laughs> if you're a storyteller or a story content teller. provider. Uh, have, you, how have you liked doing the podcast, literally, with Rob Lowe? I love it. I have so much fun. Um, because I... I you know, it's what you guys are. You're just riffing. You're having a good time. You're you're saying what's on your mind, and 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 sometimes the the most trivial stuff is the most fun to talk about. And then you get guests on, and 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 I get I you know I a lot of them I have known forever and ever and ever, and and know them in a very specific way that no one else is ever going to know them in the way that I do. Right. So I'm able to bring out sides of them that no one else is going to be able to do because they don't have the history that I have with them. And, you know, I, I had Whoopi Goldberg on uh, recently and I was like, Whoopi, do you remember when we were on the California toxic clean water caravan with Michael J. Fox, Jane Fonda, Cher? Just picking up trash down at Santa Monica Pier. And we went through the, and we went through the McDonald's drive through Do you remember? Like, like where, where are you going to, where else are you going to get that? You right, know what I'm saying? Right. So, it's super fun. Right. Rob has got so many unbelievable. It, you're kind of like, and we always we always hammer Jason, and Kimmel loves hammering Jason for stories about <laughs> you know back when he was a teen actor and stuff. You guys have such a long history in this town of doing stuff like that weird ass shit where you're like, yeah, yeah I went I went on a ten hour overnight train journey with Lavar Burton. Uh, I know. <laughs> uh, we were we were going to Vienna on our way to Vienna to see the sit. Like what the fuck? I know, and that Jason went to school with Janet Jackson is so crazy. Jason was on the massage bus with. Janet Jackson, which is like fucking crazy. That's a whole other thing, Rob. I once saw Rob on a boat in the south of France, and he comes on and he goes, we were just, uh, we just got washed out, right? You got washed out by a flooded river or some shit. Remember that? Yeah, we, we, I survived a flash flood in France. It was like a legit, like real flash flood. Got saved. I would be rescued by the police. Oh, by the way, Jason, we, so I did Jimmy's show and there's a game that's named after you that they're now renaming after me. I just want you to know the game. Truly? It's, yes. It's, so the, it's the game where you put the names in the hat. Yes. And then you pull the, the hat out and, and then you have to tell a story. 
about oh, the yeah, name? He pulls a name out of a hat or some some random uh, celebrity from years past, and, and you, you have, have to say whether you have a, a, a story associated oh, with that. Oh, great. I bet, yeah, Rob, be uh, Rob, you must crush oh, you that. you must crush that. I want you and I to play that <laughs> game. We should go mano a mano. Yeah. <laughs> I would give anything would to watch you, you two win. fucking yeah. go. Well, on let's that. just play. Let's just play. Let's just play a version right now. I'll I'll pick a name for you, and then you pick a name for me. That's a great it. idea. Yeah. That's okay, a great ready? idea. Okay, I'm ready. Fun. Okay, Telly Savalas. <laughs> uh, I don't have any direct interaction with him, <laughs> but I believe my <laughs> wife uh, that that might or no. He may be her godfather, or maybe he's the godfather <laughs> of Jen Aniston. I Wait, think what? I, I think well, he's Jen's godfather, I think, right? I think he's Jen's godfather, okay. and yeah. Amanda and she are so close, so that's why it's that's yeah. pretty so good. It's, it's sort of it's it's adjacent too, that's which good. reminds me of my my new construction um, company. It's called Adjacent Abatement, and we what we do is wow, we go in and we take correct. mold out this from. Is really, this, sorry, this is really all right. I got here's my one for you, uh, Pia Zadora. Mm, yeah. Okay. You have one. So oh I was. Wow. I was making out on the colony beach with Gregory Peck's daughter. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Fucking it. Everybody, That's, shut up. Keep going, Rob. Yep. And I hear this woman going, "That's disgusting. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. Don't you have any common decency? There are children on this beach." Mm -hmm. And I looked up and it was Pia Zadora. That's Very crazy. Heavy. But how about for bonus points, we get Gregory Peck's daughter and the Malibu Colony. I, I mean, mean Rob yeah. Lowe, this man is royal. You're a hero. I mean, come on. Rob, Jesus Christ. How long have you known, how long have you known Downey? Ninth grade history class. Wow. wow. Out there in Malibu? Samo High, Santa Monica High School. Wow. I could see it. I remember at Christmas uh, when I saw you in in we uh, at uh, the Christmas party, and then I saw you talk to Rob and I to Downey, and I was like, I could immediately see like, oh, this is deep. This is deep, long, deep, deep. You guys have that shorthand of knowing each other yeah. since being kids. Yeah, that was so. And there was no good. one more fun to party with. Downey made me laugh harder than any human being <laughs> in the world. And, yeah, he's super funny. And I, I just love what he's done with his life. And he's he's such an inspiration and a great guy. And, oh, by the way, Downey was on the bus with Cher and, and uh, Whoopi Goldberg as well. I mean, he was, we were always doing that stuff. My together. mom used to, my mom used to call her Hoopy. Right. Well, well, because because in in her defense, she couldn't see the whole word because the W was covered because that's where the I, the, the but. She but couldn't see the w. Rob, do you think you'd be able to recall enough to to write a satisfying book? Um, he's written a book. Sorry, uh, maybe, let me finish. And, and he's toured Another, it very successfully. Uh, a, yes. But yes. Uh, in a, a book, when I say book, I mean a follow up, like a to, series. Yeah. Yes, yes. What's it called? Um, Stories I only tell my friends. Is that right? Stories I only tell my friends, and the sec and the follow up, love life. So we we're talking right. about. So I'm book talking about three. the third one. The uh, third one. I'm the third one is called names and dates. Mm -hmm. and it's, <laughs> it's just names and dates and what fucking list. happened. Gregory Peck's daughter, March twelfth. Yeah. Is Adora. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. It's fucking. Uh, so I'm, now, Rob, and now you're back. I know that your new thing is you. Well, not new, but you're obsessed with golf. Uh, you've been playing a lot. You and I played a couple months ago with Danny Dees, by the way. Rob's good buddies with Danny, yeah, who's a friend of the program. Mm -hmm. um, yep. he's the best. He's the best. Uh, he's he's the, the world's only uh, good finance guy. Um, <laughs> and that's right. How you were talking about how obsessed you are with, and your game is getting really good. With, I mean, you're just getting there. You're you're on it, right? Like you're practicing a lot. Oh, I practice all the time. I don't get to play as much because I don't have that much time, really. But I, I'm practicing e easily four days a week. Like today, I'm at Fox. Is there a goal? Yes, yeah. yes. My goal is to do what you did. I want to play. I want to play in the AT and T. How was that for you? That was incredible. I mean, w w Will almost won the damn thing, but um, I, I, I had a, a really good time myself too. And all you got to do is just put your hand up. They'll have you up there. I mean, Rob, you're in. You're in for next yeah. year with us. Come on. It was yeah. such a blast. We, it was amazing. And I'm Sean doing. No, I'm, guys, I'm doing it. I'm 100% doing it. I. It always falls right in the middle of of the production oh, right. schedule. But I'm actually going to ask for the time off next year, and I'm I'm absolutely committing yeah. to doing it. There you go. I got to follow Tiger inside the ropes at, at Genesis. Oh wow! And 
Yeah, I got to be inside the ropes with Tiger, Rory, and JT. It was insane. Wow. Oh yeah, those rounds were incredible. Were you there the day when they 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 uh when Tiger birdied the last three holes and they all birdied eighteen together? No, that was the day after. I was there the day that he almost had the hole in one. Yeah. Oh, that was incredible. Yeah. One revolution. But I also saw him, you know, the green with the with the sand trap in the middle of it. Six. Oh, God, Six. Yeah, yeah. Totally. You saw him putt and, into the sand trap. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Did you I see saw that Tiger well? Woods putt in? Put into the sand trap, which just to me was the most beautiful thing in the world because I'm like, okay, that's the greatest who ever hoisted a golf club. Yeah, yeah. and even he can and, do that. And, and even it was the thing was he was going to take his medicine. He was going to, you know, it's that thing we always do where we can't quite bring ourselves to take our medicine. Yeah. yeah. We kind of also want to do the, he kind of, and, he and did I'm get like, up and down for four, though. He did, but yeah. you, you, I've putted into that uh, bunker twice. Yeah, uh, in my life, <laughs> so I bet so you didn't I make four he, twice. Uh, and the other thing he did that I noticed was whenever he would do something like that, he would go to another gear in yeah. whatever the next hole was, like another, like a another gear. I want to get Tiger on this show. I know it'd be great to have me him too. On. Wild, mm -hmm. uh, God, I just oh, Rob, so I could good. just listen to you talk about all your stuff, all your. I know, I love oh, it. God, it's just everything. You, whether Take it's his it movies easy, or his shows or his life. life. Is, by the way, Will, this is this is what the podcast is. I mean, because a lot of times somebody will bring up something and I'll go, that reminds me. Because I do have a Telly Savala story where I was eight years old and Kojak was coming to Dayton, Ohio to sign um, autographs in the uh, ladies' <laughs> undergarments of Reich's <laughs> department store. Oh, and my God. Is that true? It was... Yeah, absolutely true. And so I got my bus fare together. Autographing underwear on on the third floor is Telly Savalas. Yeah, yeah, and he was probably doing a Kenley Players. It was probably Telly Savalas <laughs> in, uh, you know, um, 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 you know, some Arthur Miller show. Mm -hmm. And I take the bus and I wait in line forever. And I and I bought him a sucker because I know Telly Savalas likes. Remember Kojak always had the sucker. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he always yeah. had a like a charms blow pop. That was his thing. Mm -hmm. And so I bought him one and I brought it and I was going to give it to him. And it's a three and a half hour line. And I'm, I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. I finally get right to the front of the line and they go, that's it. Mr. Savalas has to leave. And he fucking bails. And I'm standing <gasps> there with my sucker. Mm -hmm. And I kind of look for somebody I think is important. And I go, excuse me, would you give Mr. Savalas my, my, my sucker? And he goes, oh, kid, that's so thoughtful. I sure will. And I walk away and, just, and I'm going down the escalator. I turn around to watch and the guy throws it in the trash can. Oh. <laughs> and That's awful. That actually stayed with me forever yeah. because whenever I, like I meet someone, I'm, I'm always like, don't be Telly Savalas. Uh -huh. Don't throw it in the <laughs> Don't be. Right, right. And right. they give you a bag of freshly cooked homemade cookies. And you're like, no, nah. I'm going to eat these. In, in fairness, it wasn't Telly who did it. It was, it was a guy. It was a It's handler. true. Right. It's handler. True. It wasn't Telly. He probably would have taken. Telly would have sucked it no. for sure. <laughs> he probably would have. He would probably would have better it, way to thrown say it that. at you. Yep. Uh, well, I would. I want to listen. I, I I haven't listened. I don't. I'm not really into podcasts. <laughs> so well, you make you make a hit podcast. You don't need to listen to another one. I yeah. get it. No, it's no, a no. radio show. To Will, he's doing radio. It is radio. It is. Yeah. It's morning zoo. I feel like I feel like it's morning zoo. Drive time. Yeah, yeah. drive time. I'm always. I'm just trying to copy my buddy uh, Johnny Vaughn over there in the UK. Yeah. Um, and Rob, you're a helicopter pilot. How's the traffic on the five? Yeah. You know, it's looking a little backed up over here as the pole of the pass. It's taillights as far as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> they got the uniform for it. Well, uh, Rob, let's get out again. Uh, let's get out and play again. Yes. It was really fun. And uh, I want to be a part of that as soon as my granddad back heals up. Yeah, that's not good, man. No, I know. Don't come back too soon. I know. I got a date coming up in two days. I got to I got to. Are I you doing ice, ice baths? Thing. You, you got a date th in two days, and, it, and Amanda's cool with that? She's just like... she's uh, She wants me to be smart and safe, and she's letting me make my own decision, which is nice. And um, so, so she doesn't that mind that you're... Are you both dating, or is it just you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I am icing it. That does seem to help. Good, yeah. I'll tell you one of the nicest things, and this is a true story. This is not a bit. I hurt my back a couple years ago now. And I was at, and I was texted JB. I was like, my back really hurts. Anyway, I was at home, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, into my backyard comes Jason, and he's got like a a back heating thing, yeah. and a, like an icy hot thing, and so, and and a bunch of stuff that he brought for my back. 
I just dropped it off, and then I and got I just back dropped in my it car off. and left. And he came into the, my backyard. I was in the sauna, and he came in, and he knocked, and he's like, I got all this stuff. I was just like... Just like a little angel. And then got back in his car and left. That's yeah. right. Once a year. Okay. Yeah. Once, once, yeah. Once a day. Even a stop clock. I thought yeah. even a stop clock, you know? Yeah. yeah. Tells the right time twice a day. Okay, listen, Rob... <laughs> We love you, man. I'm so excited you, about Rob. your we show you, Rob, that with John, and he's such a nice kid. Would please say hi to him for me. Yeah, um, and also say hi to Cheryl. And yes, to Cheryl, please. your your lovely the wife best. of many years. Yeah, so oh, sweet. Such God, you guys are such nice peeps, and uh, couldn't happen no. to a better. I love dude. you guys. I I was so excited. You. You're three of my favorite in all series. Is three of my favorite people. I love everything about you guys. I love hanging with you. I love your work. Um, I love your podcast. Um. Dude, Bateman, you're making me laugh right now so hard in the fucking trailer for the the Air Jordan movie. I know. Yeah. It's like only only you can fucking steal a trailer with one line. Yeah, I know. It's so know. great. It's so you're great. Nice. You're it's nice. So it's good. amazing. You're it's nice, amazing. Man. It's um, amazing. Love you, miss you, mean it. Yeah. <laughs> love you, miss you, mean it. Um, Santa Barbara. Yep. We'll go. Um, you know, and hang or in. But let's or make just it happen. get fired off one of these 10,000 jobs you're doing and free some time up and let's yeah. go hang out. Let's I know. All right? It has Stop to be working the so hard. All right. It has to be the weekends. Uh, thank you, the great Rob Lowe. We love Bye, you, Rob buddy. Lowe. Love you. It's load. Your chin. It's load. Load. Thank oh, you, guys. Rob Lowe. Bye, Rob Don't Lowe. forget, podcast, Rob Lowe, literally, wherever you get your podcast. Literally yes. with Rob well, listen Lowe. Listen to Rob's podcast. It's listen to Rob's very podcast. y'all. And Unstable on Netflix. You're watching it. You're loving it. Uh, everything Rob Lowe uh, all the time. God Love bless. you, boys. Love you, buddy. Thanks See for you, doing bro. this, Rob. Right. Bye, buddy. Bye. Lovely man. That lovely Rob Lowe. Man. That Rob Lowe. He's, um, he's just always been nice, always been talented, always mm -hmm. been handsome. Yeah. That's uh, another guy I'd like to come back as. I think there's a long list here of guests we've had that I'd like to... Yeah, you could uh, talk to him for hours. He reincarnated. He's, he's we tried to we tried to get him on. Uh, I tried to get him on before, and he was the one we had technical glitch a couple of weeks ago, and we had oh, the yeah? bell. That was Rob. Yes, and oh, that was Rob. Oh, I didn't know. So that. I've been trying to get him on here forever, and um, you know, we had a technical glitch with uh, with uh, McConaughey way back yes. when, right? When yeah. when, when, when are you going to rebook him? I don't know. I want to get him back on here. Uh, yeah, that, that was great. a great because when we do have McConaughey on, then we can go through. Hopefully, we have the recording of. Of me when, having my hissy fit? When you had your... When Didn't you had I your snap at him a little bit? Didn't I tell you him... Did. That, Your laughing is not making things helpful, yeah. surprise <laughs> guest. And then you... And then you, and then you Who is laughing? And you slammed your... <laughs> yeah, that was so great. And then... Um, and we can talk about contact. When and we can talk on. about contact. With you know, my, but I it did... It you're going to fucking to me, break me today, Sean, with the contact. <laughs> it occurred to me earlier, like, it is somewhat... It's either dangerous or good or whatever about this thing is that we do this all the time. We're always just sort of just, you know, almost every day we're picking up the... We're talking with one another, no matter what mood we're in. And we drag that into these these interviews these conversations for the public and oftentimes we're doing this thing in a bad mood and like yeah, yeah. what if we like what if we get in a fight with one another i mean yeah. i know it's been it's been tense a couple of times but like yeah. every people just get like warts and all on this yeah. and is yeah. that smart for us to be doing that why not it's real it's normal it's real i guess yeah also who cares who cares yeah. we're not gonna get in a fight like what's Ugh. the worst we've never fuck you sean fuck you don't <laughs> you disagree with what i'm saying We've had, I think it's, uh, I don't know. I just think, like, who, who, I really mean it when I say who cares. I mean, we might as well, yeah. right? Because it's going to be lights out at some point, and then. Anyway, Rob Lowe, you know, Love he, Rob um, Lowe. Love Rob, huh? <laughs> this Rob Lowe. Hey, you know, Rob was in contact. Rob was in, he was contact. in contact. He was. He was in contact. Yeah. And by the way, he's not, a, he's not allergic to work. Boy, he works a lot. By the way, just, just for the record, no recollection of him in contact or Matthew McConaughey for that matter. Well, Matthew McConaughey and Jodie yeah, Foster were the, the stars. stars. Yeah, yeah. But I only remember her in it. And wasn't there a kid too? No, there are no kid. Uh -uh. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm conflating. You thinking of Nell? Another uh, Jodie Foster vehicle. I do remember the incredible opening pullback, right from uh, the, from Earth, amazing, all the way yes. back. Oh, when I emailed you that one shot where the, she runs oh, into yeah. the mirror, into the mirror. Yep, how'd yeah. they do? Oh, I still don't yeah, know how yeah, they yeah, do yeah. that. Oh, that's how they. That's the kid when she was a little kid. That's yes, thank you, okay. yeah. thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, but wait, but I, in, his sh in his show that he's doing now, the nine one one Lone Star. Yeah. yeah, I thought I couldn't tell if he was a cop or a CIA or an F. B. Yeah. All 
right. right. Will yeah. allow. Go high. Will go allow. high. Go high. Will yeah. allow. And repeat it. And repeat it. And repeat it. I love it. I love it a lot. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Michael Grant Terry, Rob Armjarv, and Bennett Barbaco. Smartless.